Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm talking about my favorite subject. It's data. But guess what kind of data? It's education data. You guys know I work in US education. Actually, my role changed. Um, but anyway, enough about that. We'll talk about that later. And so I'm going to show you how you can download a K-12 solution that I created and get it deployed in your environment in about five minutes. Stay tuned. Okay, so first of all, for you guys that are not in K-12, let me start there, right? Who don't work in education, it's okay. Um, I started a new role at the beginning of the fiscal year, um, at the beginning of the calendar year um, at Microsoft. Not only do I cover K-12, but I cover state and local and also federal government. But I'm not gonna limit these solutions to that, to, the, to, you know, to those verticals or those industries. If you're interested in what, you, what I've done in this video, what I'm gonna show you, explain to you, um, hit me up, post it in the comments below, let me know. I'll work with anyone um, and create some nice solutions, all right? Oh wait, wait, you're asking about this shirt? Oh man, this shirt. This shirt was kind of like a New Year's gift, Christmas gift for my family, check it out. Got a couple of them, they made some from Adam and myself. Adam, this is his first time seeing the shirt, so he's probably like, what, where did you get this from? They're on the way, man, they're on the way. Check your box, they're coming to you right now. You may already have them by the time this video posts. Anyway, okay, so back to the video. So I created this solution, this K-12 district solution. I'm looking at absences and incidents. How did I land on absences and incidents? Well, I was traveling around towards the end of the calendar year, 2017, meeting with school districts and teachers and district leaders and principals. And when I landed at their IT staff, they were like, man, it would be great if there were some free samples out there to just kind of help us get started with analytics and business intelligence and stuff like that. And I said, you know what? Give me some data and I'll build something for you guys. So I got some data from my friends out at District 11. I'm not gonna say all their names. They know who I'm talking about. Um, they provided me with some great help with getting started with the solution. And so they provided me, you know, sample data. Thank you guys, big ups to District 11 out in Colorado Springs. Thank you guys, probably be out there to visit you again soon. Um, and so we took that data, I took that data and just kind of loaded it up, just staged it up, cleaned it up to move all any personal identifiable information. And then I created this great Power BI solution that me, you know, myself, District 11 and myself, um, we want to share with you guys. Also had some help from my friends out in Stetson University. You guys know who you are. Thank you so much. And so we took all this information, we built this solution to help the districts and the district leaders and the principals and the teachers quickly identify students at risk. So we started out with a risk factor, but after research and talking to multiple school districts, we determined that the risk factor was a little too subjective. Every school district we went to, they had different reasons or ways they calculated um, at-risk students, and we just decided to kind of generalize it a little bit so it'll be applicable to school districts across the country, and we came up with three factors. And I'm going to show you what those factors are, so you got to stay tuned um, when I show you the solution. So how do you get the solution? How do you get this great solution, Patrick, that you're talking about? Well, it's kind of easy, but you guys know how I do. The best way to learn about how to get this... Wait, 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 wait. So I promise for all you guys that don't work in education. If you want to create something like this, after you watch this video and you're interested in creating a solution um, that's applicable, that can be generalized across your industry, hit me up, post it in the comments below. I'm happy to work with you guys or even connect you with my counterparts at Microsoft that would be willing to help you. But just let me know, all right? Anyway, back to this solution. So, um, you guys know how I like to do. The best way for me to show you this is to what? Head over to my laptop, okay. The way, the place that you're gonna get started is head over to GitHub. And we're gonna post this link. Adam will put this in the comments of the video. He is the video guru, expert, whatever you wanna call him, all right? And so what you wanna do is if you're new to GitHub, you click here and you download the zip, okay? Take just a few seconds, get the zip downloaded. Once the zip is downloaded, go to your file explorer where you downloaded it, extract it out, you'll get this folder, and there's some contents in this folder. The very first thing you wanna do it's open the Word document and read the instructions. I know we're IT people, we don't like to read the instructions, but read them, I promise they're gonna help you out so much, okay? That's why I wrote them, okay? So, we go here to the Word document, you'll see at the top, 
Um, it just has a title and then there's lots of authors, your minimum requirements, and then read the instructions. Read the instructions, read through, because they're gonna tell you what you need to do to use this Power BI solution. Um, once you get that done, then you go down to the data dictionary and this is where, this is the meat, the bones, the foundation structure of this solution, okay? You need this, you gotta use this, you gotta set this up before you can use the solution. So what you wanna do, there's tables. Each one of these represent a table um, in the model. And what you need to do is you create a view. So you can see right there, VW underscore PBI. Each one of these views are gonna be, start with VW underscore PBI. Then you give it the name of the table, right, action. And then each in each section, there's another table that tells you the columns that need to be included in that view, okay? Action ID, action. Action ID is the unique identifier for the corresponding description of that action, okay? And then you just follow it through, right? You create, create, create. What I've done also is included a sample T-SQL script in the GitHub repo. And so if you take a look at that script, all you need to do is you can keep the first you know, the drop and the create and just replace that with your script and then run this on your student information system. So all of these views, all this information, all this stuff is extracted out from your student information system, whether you're using, you know, PowerSchool or Q or whatever you're using, right? You just go create these views against that student information system. That's the first step, the most pivotal step in all of this, right? Once that's done, you run it. You run this against your student information system then the next thing you wanna do is go out to that folder and open up the attendance and incident template. Just double click it, just double click it. And once you double click it, it's gonna open up and it's gonna prompt you for your database server and your database name. All you need to do is go and get your database server and then the name of the database, just like that and click the button labeled load. You have to click this button. Don't press enter, don't pass go, you won't collect anything, all right? Unless you press load, okay? Click the button labeled load. And if you need to enter your credentials, enter your credentials. If you've done this a couple of times, it won't prompt you. Um, but then within a sh few short seconds, you know what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna tell you. You guys have to keep watching. And bam, bam, just like that. The pages of the report, they're loaded up, and now you can start taking a look at what I've created. Just like that, all you had to do was create some views, put in your connection string, and click the button labeled load, click the button, click the button labeled load. Now you land on these four great pages of reports, um, four great pages in a report. You probably have many more schools here, and this is just lots of data. You can click and you can see information for a specific school if you want to. If you come down here, you can right click on one of these bars and drill into a school, choose school right there. And then what you're gonna see is a lots of information for a particular school. And this is where, you remember at the beginning I said the risk factor. And so the risk factor was really subjective and we decided to take that out, that calculation out, because we would have to go through each, every time a school district pulled this down and tried to use it, we would have to help them calculate the school district. Don't wanna do that, that is not efficient. You guys know how I roll. Not lazy, just really efficient, all right? Okay, but what we did was we took these three um, primary things, unexcused absences, cumulative GPA, and incidents. An incident is like a suspension or, you know, a tardy, not a tardy, sorry, a suspension or fighting or some type of truancy, right? So we have that here, and now you can use these little slicers to identify, you know, put it, fill in your, you know, your thresholds for these things, and that would identify your, identify your at-risk population in your, your school or district or whatever it is, um, um, wherever you are. And then you have this, this list of students, and from there, watch this. So I can choose one of these students, like this particular student right here has 25 unexcused absences, or this one has 13 incidents, right-click on it, drill down to the student overview, which gives me like a highlight, just a quick overview of what's going on with that student. And I can see lots of things, their GPA is low, there's lots of unexcused absences and incidents. Here's all a list, the student was the perpetrator in all these incidents. Here's a trend of her absences. If I want to, there's something new um, that I actually added the morning that I recorded this video, because I was on with District 11, they said, hey, there's a new thing called Pathways. 
And so you can drill in, look at the attendance pathway, which is kind of like just an overview of all of her or his attendances, that particular student attendance. And I can choose a term, then I can say, wow, in November there were 100 um, attendance occurrences for this particular student. If I click it, I can see that there were lots of unexcused absences, excused absences, and a few um, unexcused tardies here, right? So really interesting report and it's ready to go just like that. Now, all you need to do is click publish, share this out with everyone in your district and they can start consuming and doing things and you know, telling you how great you are and then telling me how great I am, all right? Anyway, so pretty neat, pretty easy to deploy. Um, if you have any questions, comments about it, if you wanna get in on this action, post it in the comments below. Let me know what you think. I'm up for building other types of industry, industry solutions. Like I said earlier, I'm not only working with education, I'm working with, working with state and local and the federal government. So if you have something that you think is generalized and can be deployed across a large population of users, let me know, hit me up. I'm happy to work with you guys um, and we can get this going, all right? What do you think? You got any more questions, comments? Like I said, post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please be sure to subscribe. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. As always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.